On my show, we've seen our fair share of aged guitars. However, I've never seen one exactly like this. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your Daily Dose Guitar Information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. I really need your guys' opinions on this gold top. It's listed as a Murphy Lab 56 Ultra Light Aged Guitar, but like, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> I have never seen a natural aging job do this. Like, sometimes when guys try to relic it themselves with a compressed can of air, that'll happen. Does anybody else get, like, ancient Egyptian hieroglyphic vibes out of this? I actually like it, but more so as, like, an art piece guitar. But it doesn't always look the same at every angle. If you look at it at this angle, it's got the usual long ones. The back doesn't look aged at first, but the closer you look, yeah, it's got the finish checking. I wonder if this is one of the earlier Murphy Labs when they still hadn't exactly figured everything out as far as how they're doing their new aging techniques that they're very secretive of. Whoa, now we're looking at the neck. That almost looks like moisture damage at this point. Our serial number could potentially date to 2022. But yeah, sure enough, it's got the Murphy Lab COA. That's one of the more unique ones I've seen. If somebody told me that they aged this themselves outside of the factory, I probably would have believed it. Or if it was like in a flood. So I'm not sure if that's a compliment or a criticism, but honestly, the price was not bad at 44 on the used market. But now moving on from that, let's look at a semi-what more traditional beauty. This Paul just has an awesome top to it with a great dark red crimson color. The golden knobs complement it very well, and then you've got your nickel hardware, making it not too boisterous and over the top. As far as quilt tops go, this one is great. It's a nice combination between dark and light. I think that's what makes this one look so good, is that really dark border around the edge, but it's not really enough to call it a burst. It's more of like a perimeter on that one, but it works incredibly well. It looks like the seller just freshly conditioned that fretboard for the photo shoot. It's nice and dark, however, still appears to be rosewood. Our headstock is not too different. But whoa, where'd our serial number go? That's one of those guys that blurs it out before they post it. Why did they do that? Some sellers state they do that for the privacy of the guitar so somebody doesn't steal the listing's photos and try to sell a fake using the real photos or they copy your serial number. However, the more dastardly evil version of this is they know it's stolen, they don't want to show the full serial. And unfortunately, there is no good way to know for sure, but usually it's just because one guy saw somebody else do it and thought, you know what, that's an all right idea. Because there's two sides of that stolen token. Some guys can file a false police report Report using the serial number that's in your ad and then sometimes it can get a little bit dicey. I haven't heard any stories of that in a long time, but it has happened. But most scammers aren't brazen enough to file false police reports. But anyway, back to the back of the guitar. This mahogany body even has a little bit of dancing ribbon flame in it, which is pretty cool. I'd love to tell you what year this one was produced, but he was very diligent in hiding the serial number everywhere. But it is billed as a 59Q reissue. Now what does that mean? It means the quilt top otherwise being built to 59 specs. But you have to remember, this is a custom shop Les Paul standard, not a 59 reissue. Big difference as far as the values go. Now, as far as the specs, usually it just comes down to these are weight relieved. And then some years they can have different bridges. Now, judging by the case it has, it would have to be mid 2000s through about 2018. Just looking at this, it would not surprise me if it was like late 2000s, early 2010s, because that's usually what the backs are looking like at this point. My final guess would be like 2012, because they like to play around with colors then. Oh, look, it's right there in the title, 2011. I was pretty close. But it's listed for 9,000 US by Monkey Tar in Seoul, Korea. Feel free to make them an offer if you need to add that to your collection. But now, check out this SG. It's got one of those generic titles, 1991 through 2016. That's just how Reverb categorizes things, which many times is a good way to get a general listing around. However, it's always best to revise this title if you know the exact year, because sometimes people are looking for birth year guitars or graduation dates. So take a look at this and tell me, why do you think I wanted to feature it? If you answered because somebody put a Maestro Vibrola on it, replacing the original Stop Our Tail piece, no, it's this. I like it. It's just a weird little random streak in the body. It's not going to be on every SG. It gives it character, and I love it. But if we run all the way up here to the headstock, I can also tell that's a late 80s, potentially super early 90s SG because we have the prehistoric Gibson logo styling on it. It also has the obnoxiously wide-looking headstock. 
So sure enough, we flip over to the back. This is the fourth day of 1990, Nashville produced. So that's a new turn of the decade. It's got an error correct case, unique wood grain figuring. Unfortunately, it doesn't necessarily continue on to the back unless you consider this. So being at 1990, that is very fair considering the modifications that have been done. However, important to note, this is not a Gibson branded trim. It's probably aftermarket of some sort, maybe even Epiphone, if that matters to you. But I would imagine this might actually be the 62 reissue SG, as they called it back then. However, they're stating it has 57 classic humbuckers, which if true, means they're replaced because the 57 classic wasn't out yet in 1990. Those were prototyped in 1992. But speaking of generally awesome looking versions, here's one Ishibashi over in Japan listed. It's one of the Swamp Ash Les Paul Studios. This one's extra cool because it's got so much wood grain. It's got some flame figuring within it, which is not always a guarantee on these. The only thing that stopped me from picking this one up to document it is the fact somebody replaced the pickups and then the solder where it could never be original. I'm picky like that. But I guess to be fair, on a model like this, it doesn't really matter. You buy it for the awesome wood grain because the original pickups are still in production super easy to replace. But there's a few different versions of the Swamp Ash Studio. This particular one has no inlays and an ebony fretboard. And then when you flip it over to the back, it has the mahogany neck. There is a version out there that has the maple neck if you prefer. But Ash guitars sound pretty cool. If you're kind of interested in it, I do have an Explorer Pro review that has a similar body construction as this one. Although sadly, not with the flame. But looking at the back, that is at least two pieces. But I'm not seeing any flame figuring back here. I'm curious, does this actually have a top? Because it sure doesn't look like it. But these definitely started life as satin finishes, so you can tell it's been naturally glossed up from a player. And somebody's replaced our tuners with the Planet Waves. And this one's from the year 2003. The asking price is, I would say, a little bit high. But beggars can't be choosers when you want beautiful flameage. Similar to our red one, I found a cobalt blue version now, but this one is done up in a flame top and it's advertised from being from the year 2012. So just like our last one, it's really just about the color. This one's a much brighter fretboard, but what caught my attention about this one is the nice faded denim blue top. It's got like really nice piercing blue back and sides. So it's not just your standard typical aniline dyes or red color, which I thought was pretty fascinating. Got our Gibson Custom decal on the back and our serial number in D dating it to 2012. The price is much better on that one. But if you're into exotic woods or alternatives like I am, you might enjoy this, which I was shocked to see is brand new. Listed for about six grand over by 6060 Sounds over in the UK. It's advertised as a class five oak top Les Paul. I didn't even know Gibson was making the Class 5 series anymore. That's another one of those confusing ones where Gibson hasn't done well enough of a job marketing them to make people understand what they are and how they're different from like a reissue. This one's got a pretty nice oak top. It still has the ABR1 bridge. It's fully gilded out. Got the ambered style knobs. Then check this out. Look at that logo. It is tinted yellow. That means all the lacquer on this guitar will have a tint to it. And then, hey, wait. Wait, wait, wait a minute. What are they doing here? This is a 2018. Okay, everything makes sense now. Why are they calling it a 2023? Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say, I was pretty sure they didn't make those things anymore, but you never know when they'll start doing stuff like that again. So this has the apex head carved. That's part of this whole situation. I'm not even sure this is actually a class five. It might just be a modern Les Paul standard. But anyways, we got a cool molasses colored back. But if you're curious how an oak top Les Paul sounds, we have documented one in this episode right here. That was a very cool guitar, but it had a Karina back and sides. And one last one for the road. Here's an SG All-American, which would have normally looked like this. Pretty bare bones guitar. It was part of a budget level series of guitars that could still be said, hey, we were American made. Not the most exciting. But then somebody made it exciting. They gave it this really cool teal sparkle finish with that nice black pick guard, threw a P94 style pickup in there. So that's really a P90 disguised as a humbucker there. You've got the tunematic stop bar tailpiece. So they're basically trying to make this like an SG Junior, but still left with the simplified controls. And once again, love to see it. When you refinish a guitar, do not be dumb, especially with big metal flake and or glitter finishes. Mask off your serial number. It might look dumb, but if you 
ever have to sell that guitar, you're saving yourself a lot of hassle. Because no serial number means the guitar could be stolen and you're going to scare away people. And be sure to take photos of the guitar in process and then take the photos of the guitar once it's finished with the same background so you can prove that that was that exact guitar and that there's no breaks, cracks, or repairs hiding underneath it. Otherwise, there's just no way to know. So that's why you can usually get a deal on a refinished guitar. And because you've broken the originality. But here's the other cool thing about the All-American. Double dots at the end. This is a 24 fret SG. And oof. They did such a good job everywhere else. But the headstock, they kind of messed that one up. They went for aftermarket eBay decals on that. That's not the right size. That's definitely not right. We got a really ugly looking truss rod cover on here. But everything else is looking good. They even have an era correct Gibson USA case that these did not normally come with. But he's asking $1,500 on that. You can make him an offer if you're interested. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And may Ra be with you. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one. Thank you.